I'm Alexander of Derlington. I've um, been working on a, making armour for a long time now. Um, I've always loved armoured combat and when I got started in the in, in the game it was um, the only real way for me to put my put an armour kit together was to make it myself and so I learned how and have carried on and actually found out I really enjoyed it. Um, but the thing I've always really struggled with and I'm assuming other people do as well is making articulated joints. Um, and making nice functional looking articulated joints which are a little bit tricky but not impossible and it's only really a very small jump up from the basic uh, arm ring of like making the compound curves and punching holes polishing and once you get the trick of it it's pretty easy and um, that's what I'd like to show you today we're going to talk through all of the different bits from the patterns how to cut them out um, how to finish the edges uh, the actual making the complex curves uh, making little details like shaping fans for strength and then uh, polishing and the last bit and then probably the most interesting bit is the assembly of the articulation and you can see uh, just how, kind of how fiddly it is and um, hopefully I won't make too many mistakes when doing it and I hope you enjoy this class. So to make my articulated knees I'm going to uh, use my own patterns which I've developed over a good few years now. made uh, several of these uh, joints and um, over the time my patterns got slightly more refined um, and one of the most important things I've learned is the, the curves on them are more subtle than you might think and to even to make quite steep curves like at the front of the knee then uh, you need less curve in the flat than you might think. So I'll just talk you through the individual pieces. So uh, this is the first half of the knee with a fan. Okay. Now this bit's going to go down the outside of the leg and this bit's going to be at the front of the knee. This is the adjoining half to that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these out as two separate pieces and weld them together. Yes I know that's not a historical thing but it does make the whole process quite a lot uh, easier and quicker and cheaper to do so um, I'm going to do that today. Um, and then the last piece is the articulating lame itself. Now this piece here as you can see this is on paper and these are on card. This is because these are on thick card because to me this is a fixed shape now so I'm, all of mine are going to be like this whereas this one here maybe I'm going to refine this a few more times so it's just on paper so I can uh, tweak it easier and when I get a shape that I'm really really happy with then I'll put it onto card and then it'll be fixed forever. I'd just like to talk a bit about the material uh, the whole project should be made out of 16 gauge mild steel and um, this is hot rolled mild steel about 1.5 millimeters in thickness if you are adverse to waxing or polishing your armour, then stainless steel is better. However, it is a lot more difficult to work and weld. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing this on an amateur basis like me, my old steel is um, cheaper and easier to work with, my preferred material. Measuring the knee. Before measuring the and sizing these, the two really important measurements you need to take. Firstly, is going point to point round the side. And when you're looking at this and looking at pictures, what you need to realise is a lot of that armour you're looking at is suitable for horsemen where they didn't have a lot on the inside of the knee because that was protected by a horse anyway. So what you may find is you have to actually extend your inner side of your knee slightly to give you adequate protection for foot combat in SCA. Okay? The second piece you need to know is how wide your knee is from here to here because if you make it too narrow and you've got to allow for at least half an inch of padding underneath then what you'll find is you'll be able to get them on and off and lastly like going top to bottom like realistically how much do you need to bend um, what is the rest of your armor going to look like are you going to put rigid coices on is it going to be padded are you going to have demi greaves coming off the, all those other things which you may have to make a decision before you start creating stuff I'm going to do measuring the knees with my uh, dividers. Put that across there. Hold it firm so it doesn't move. Measure it down there. That's three and three quarter inches. So if I then allow one quarter of an inch for the lanes, which will fit on the inside of the knee, and then allow a half inch of padding for each side, that means that my, my shell needs to be five inches across in the middle. As you can see here I've started to lay out my patterns I've got to balance not 
taking up too much space and wasting material with being able to get my cutting tool in. So I'm just using a normal Sharpie marker and I'm going to lay out these, lay two of these, two of these and eight of these. Next phase of the job is actually moving into using some serious tools and I've got some workshop hazards to deal with, things that are hot, heavy, sharp, at high velocity, or any combination or all of the above. So, I mean, I've only got one set of eyes, ears and hands, and I take that seriously, I need them for my work. So when I'm doing things, I do like to be dressed properly. And um, so spark and fire resistant overalls on, use goggles or glasses, depending on what tools I'm using. Use ear defenders, decent ear defenders, because a lot of hammering work with my ears pretty close to what I'm doing, so that'll be bad. And of course, gloves. And you can't really see, but I've got wellies with steel toe caps on as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut this sheet of steel down to size a bit, and then I can work on cutting the individual pieces out. And here we have all of the pieces ready to cut out um, in a nice easy to handle format um, so I'll just get on with it. Here is a piece that we've prepared. Um, now I don't know if you can see on a video, but those edges are really quite sharp um, and that makes it challenging to handle safely through the next phases of the project. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna go and clean these up on the bench grinder. Getting on with the project a bit now. We've got all the pieces cut, finished, and you can see I've got eight similar lanes, two of these, and two of the insides and two of the outside fans ready to go. And we're going to move on to dishing next. <laughs> 